We need to do a review today, but they gave rides to my dogs. I, I can't. I can't do this. No, 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 no. We gotta clean this up before I can do this review. Let's get this car washed. Welcome to Inputs on Enter the Gungeon. Uh, oh, oh my god. We've just been sitting there for like a month. It's been like a month. It's gonna sit there for like a month. It was about two years ago. The date was April 5th, 2016, when the game just dropped into my lap. I was playing Fallout 4 for about, yeah, I, I think I was just playing Fallout 4 and streaming that for a long time. So I was finally able to get my hands on this game. And after a little, I don't know, I don't want to call it Binding of Isaac exhaustion, but after completing all the challenges and speed running Binding of Isaac for a little bit, I immediately fell in love with Enter the Gungeon for uh, multiple reasons. I might I add too, I was playing Dark Souls 3. I was excited as everyone else to play that game, got my hands on it and pushed it to the side so that I can have more time for Enter the Gungeon. Bang, bang, bang. And I can't believe it honestly came out two years ago. I thought my reaction time would be, you see me just looking to fall the time. I thought my reaction time would be a little slower. I thought I would have suffered. And in truth, I did. I suffered a whole lot because my thumbs are damaged from all the dodge rolling and dipping and weapon swapping and last second decisions you got to make in this game. This game through came together. Not because of Jolly Friends wanting to make something akin to the past, that's a nostalgia trip, but also a bullet hell at the same time. This game was loaded and given to us by Dodge Roll Games, a studio created by the former EA Mythic employees. This game came together through studio closings and trying to flex their creative minds independently without relying on Papa EA. Now they took the bullet hell elements, gun puns, I cannot stress how many gun puns there are because I roll my eyes a lot at puns, so my eyes are like this pretty much by the fifth hour of the game. In a good way, of course. Now, this may seem a little overwhelming, especially since I claim to love Binding of Isaac so much, and then I have this, this deep love for these roguelike games that are a pain in the ass to play, and you, have to, yeah, you just have to play them over and over to get good at them. I thought it would be the same thing for Gungeon, but this one, you have to be a little more precise. Of course, you move with the left stick, you use the right stick to aim your little reticle around, and you're, unless you want to customize it, you can use circle for blanks, and you have a dodge roll button also. The D-pad is used for swapping weapons left and right, and your items up and down. Now, so those are your basic controls. Now let's get to the concept of actually dodging the bullets. You can dodge through the bullets, of course, or you can try to dodge to your enemy if you got an eye allows you to bounce off of them, but beware of the contact damage. This is why blanks are so important, because when you fire off a blank, let me rephrase that. When you use a blank bullet, <laughs> firing blanks, I guess, uh, it also does damage, not only, but a, a huge shockwave just goes on through the room. That huge shockwave that goes on through the room with using the blank bullet gives you that extra couple seconds to regain your composure, gets rid of all the bullets on the screen, and you can even take a time to pause. That's a good thing also about swapping weapons. When you hold it to actually scroll through your weapons, time slows down. Not by a whole lot because if a bullet's still coming this way and you're trying to dodge it, it's not gonna work. You're gonna get hit, but at least you get to choose your weapon. Don't be afraid to use those blanks because when you go to the next floor, they will give you two blanks. So use them up. So this is randomly generated, of course, this, since this is a rogue type game, so it's gonna be something different every time you go down. The shopkeeper is no nonsense, and his, uh, his wares, they increase by price, of course, by every floor. Uh, and also, you can steal from the store. That's a fun part. That is a trophy if you steal 10 things from the store. Good luck, because the shopkeeper will ban you from the store if he catches you. And also, if you try to shoot up the place, he'll shoot you, making all his wares unavailable for the rest of the game. If you're going to steal, do it properly by not getting caught. Hey, what's up? So, I realized I missed a couple things on the in the car, so I figure I'll just talk about them right now. One of the other things I want to talk about was SOL, shit out of luck factor. And that just pretty much things are out of your control. I wouldn't even consider them RNG issues because an ammo box can spawn, a treasure chest can spawn right next to a pit. And sometimes you use a blank or sometimes an enemy would cause a shockwave to ripple. And that item or key uh, would fall into a pit 
and for a lot of things that you need to do to unlock a shortcut involve you collecting keys or collecting little things that can fall into pits. So that when that happens, it's just unfortunate, but it didn't happen too much. I also didn't get to talk about the characters as well, so I'll quickly just go through them because you need to unlock the backstory yourself. I don't want to spoil anything. For the main characters of the game, they each have a usable item that they come with and their own distinct weapon as well to go with their character. The hunter, she has a bow and arrow, but a pretty good side revolver as well. The convict comes with a shotgun and molotovs. The pilot has a pick lock. The pilot comes with a pick lock that has a 50% chance of failing or succeeding. If you fail, the chest is locked forever and you cannot open it, you can only destroy it. The marine, he comes with a supply drop, AKA the name of the, the last DLC and you know what they called it then now. But it's a one-time use supply drop, which is good because in case you end up on the fourth floor or something like that, and you haven't come by many good usable items. And the Marine comes with an extra piece of armor. So that helps out a lot of newbies as well. So the Marine is definitely the best starting character. And that's all I gotta say. Once again, if, if you can get your hands on this game, I would highly recommend it. It's about $14.99 across all platforms. I mean, a little bit more on Switch, maybe a little bit less on PC. But that's been another episode of Inputs On. I'm going to try to get up. Ah!